Hello, welcome to Scrivener 3 Fundamentals. I'm Vanessa Keir. This is my series, Compiling Your Scrivener Project to Microsoft Word. Part 1, Using the Provided Templates. Before we get started, I just want to clarify that compile is the word that Scrivener uses for the process of exporting your project text to another format such as Microsoft Word. And I know that compile is a process that can be confusing. So hopefully this series of videos will make you more comfortable with the options available. If you're coming over from Scrivener 2 and felt somewhat comfortable with compile in Scrivener 2, you probably had quite a shock when you saw how different compile is in Scrivener 3. So again, hopefully these videos will make you feel comfortable with the new options. So let's go over to Scrivener and take a look at our first step, using the provided templates to get your project into Microsoft Word. Okay, here we are in Scrivener 3. This is a novel sample project that I downloaded from Scrivener's website from their media kit. And you can see that over here in the binder, we have our manuscript with three folders. Each folder is named, and then all the sub documents, all the text documents inside the folders are also named. So in this video, I'm just going to show you how to get all of this inside the manuscript out into Word without making any formatting changes. Okay, let's go up to File, Compile. And if you're coming over from Scrivener 2, this is going to look quite different, but it's pretty simple once you get down to it. On the left is a list of preset formats, and you can see that Manuscript Times is already highlighted here. I just highlighted it again in purple. In the middle here, these are the um, preset layouts for different sections of your binder. So this is an indication, like a little preview, of how anything that's getting applied under this um, section title is going to look. So if you have a chapter folder, this with the chapter 1 and the 1 spelled out, and then the section title is how it is going to appear when the compile is finished. And then over here on the right, this is a little bit more familiar at least part of it if you're coming from Scrivener 2. You have your tick box on the left, so if there's pieces of this that you don't want to include, you can untick them. Then it over here on the right, it's a new part, and it's tied back to this middle piece. This is where you tell it what type um, you're applying to that level of the hierarchy. So for example, your title page is getting the section type front matter. And you can check over here and see that this top one here, I just clicked on the front matter box and you can see that it has highlighted in yellow the title page. So that is the only part of what's in your binder that's going to get the front matter style applied to it. Again, if you're coming over from Scrivener 2, Scrivener 2 would highlight in yellow in your actual binder and in Scrivener 3, it's highlighting it here in the list. So if I click here on first light, you can see that chapter folder section type is chosen, which is this one here. I just clicked on it in the center section, and we've got the yellow showing us that all of our folders are getting this applied. And again, it's going to spell out the number of the chapter, and it's going to bring in the section title. And then if I click on one of the text documents, you can see that it's getting the scene section type applied, and that's here. And again, it's all showing up in yellow in this um, window over here. The title page is being pulled in from this box down here, this tick box, the add front matter um, for manuscript format which is, if you go over to your actual binder, you'll see that you had 
three options for your front matter, manuscript format, paperback, and ebook. And so it's pulling in whatever documents are under the manuscript format folder, which in this case is only your title page. So you can see again in the center section, way up at the top, it says here font times New Roman. Way up at the top here in this gray bar, it says compile for, and this is how you tell it what format you want the final product to be in. So right now it's compiling for print. So basically it will take everything and then bring up a print box and it will send it right to your printer. So I'm going to use my drop down and I'm going to go down and I'm going to choose the older version of Microsoft Word. And now to compile, I go down to the lower right and hit the big blue compile button. Now I have already tested this a couple times and so I'm going to call this test three. And then you'll notice that there's a tick box. Um, I believe the default is to have it ticked and it will automatically pick your word processing program. I don't actually use Microsoft Word on my computer. I use something called NeoOffice, which is a form of OpenOffice. And so that's what it's automatically going to open this file in. And then ironically, instead of saying compile, Scrivener actually uses the word export here. So you click on that and it will save. And if you look in the upper left hand corner, you may see a file converter message at some point, which is perfectly normal. And this is how the document looks once it's been exported. This is obviously the title page in this table up top. This information on the left is something that was typed into the title page document inside that front matter folder. This 3200 count is a code that rounds up your word count. And this information, the title and the author was also coded in. So if you use the novel template from Scrivener to start your project, you will see a sample title page in that manuscript format front matter that has these codes already in it. But I'm not really as concerned about that right now, particularly if this is a draft. Here's the part you probably care more about. So for the header, it's pulling in the author's last name, putting the title of the project in all caps, and then putting in a page number. And then if we go down a bit, and I am going to apologize because I have changed my um, Mac highlight to purple. Um, and it may not be showing up as good on the video, but here is the chapter one with the one spelled out and then the name from that first chapter, just like we saw in the compile preview window that it said it would do. So if we go back over to Scrivener, again, you can see that the first light was our first title for the first folder there, basically our first chapter. This is all in Times New Roman. It appears to be double spaced. And this is, of course, placeholder text. And if you go down to the first paragraph, it is removing the first line indent, but it is indenting subsequent paragraphs. It is separating your text documents. So any of those text documents that are inside the same folder are being separated in the manuscript by a hashtag. And again, paragraph after the hashtag is also not getting the first paragraph indent. And that basically is that. I hope this short video made you comfortable with the process of getting your manuscript out of Scrivener and into Microsoft Word without having to make any tweaks. And of course, if you decide that you don't want that title page, you can just untick that in the box in the compile window. In the next video, I'll walk you through how to take that Scrivener template and customize it. For example, how to change the font, how to change the spacing, and how to tell it 
whether or not you want it to pull in the titles from your documents in your binder and how to tell it to change the chapter number from being a word to a num actual number. So until next time, happy writing. Bye.